over 40 years that I've been farming, there have been some good years, some bad years, but all in all, life has been good. We as wheat growers have learned to deal with weather, pests, and markets. However, in the last two years, a new wrinkle has been introduced. Wheat growers in Idaho have experienced untimely rain during harvest. We realize that when a wheat crop is ripe, undue moisture can cause sprouting. We also realize that sprout damage is a visible indicator of conversion of starch to sugar in the kernel. And we further realize that this conversion makes the flour from this wheat less acceptable for milling. While we may not like it, we accept that if our product isn't suitable for the intended end use, it will be discounted accordingly. Wheat is marketed based on federal grade and such other factors that millers and end users demand. Various tests are applied to the wheat sample that is taken from the truck at harvest. For the first time two years ago, falling numbers test was done. Discounts were severe and some farmers received discounts for both falling numbers and sprout damage. Historically, visual sprout damage was thought to be a good indicator of conversion of starch to sugar. The falling numbers test has been used as an indicator of starch to sugar conversion for years at the export level. However, it wasn't used at the farm level until two years ago. Our overseas customers have demanded falling number tests on each shipment from exporters, and if a shipment is received that has low falling numbers, discounts are applied. This has a domino effect back to the country elevator and then to me. If there has been starch to sugar conversion, and if that conversion results in loss in end use value, we as farmers can expect to have it reflected in price. It is only fair to ask whether or not a falling number test actually measures loss of end use quality. Is it consistent? Is it reliable? We need to ask these questions whenever we see a grading factor that appears to be arbitrary. When flour millers hear about rain at harvest, the first thing they think about is sprout damage. Discounts may be most severe right at harvest. Buyers are just starting to see samples of the new crop and the overall quality of the crop is unknown. Know who you are doing business with. Discounts may be lower later in the season. Total discounts are based on federal grading factors plus those that are market driven. At times there is room for negotiation. Contracts should be carefully read. A grower needs to know what market driven factors will be taken into account in pricing and what discounts may be applied. Be careful if title passes. Discount levels are set by the market, not by regulators. When is a falling number too low? Different end uses have different needs. A falling number score below 300 is thought to indicate sprout damage and hence starch to sugar conversion. For some uses, anything above 250 may be acceptable. What can we do if we think the falling number is too low? When did the rain come during harvest? Was the crop right? Were other growers in the area having similar experience? Were there differences between grading labs? Were there differences between elevators? At least get a second opinion. Get a retest, ask the questions. Last year, I know growers who had test results that varied by 25%. The falling number test must follow strict lab protocols. There seems to be a wide variability in the results of a falling number test. We are learning that many things can influence the result. I'm not a serial chemist, and what I know about quality tests is limited. But we do have help from the USDA ARS Western Wheat Quality Lab in Pullman, Washington. Okay, Joe, so everybody thinks they know what falling number is, but you don't really know what a falling number is until you've actually looked at the instrument and understand a little bit about how it works and what the numbers actually mean in real life and to be able to interpret those. So here we have the instrument itself, which is essentially a vat full of boiling water and a gizmo that stirs and then measures how long it takes for a weighted probe to go down through a plug of starch. So here we have two samples of ground wheat that we're going to measure today. So we have put in 25 milliliters exactly, neither more nor less, into the tube. What it does is it thickens, and this is just what's being measured here, is how thick does the water and starch get in this boiling water vat. So they go down inside, and we push our start button. So the starch and flour slurry are down in here, and it's being boiled, and as the temperature is rising, 
the starch begins to gelatinize. Same thing as throwing the flour or cornstarch into your gravy, a little heat, a little water, and you start mixing around, it starts thickening up. Same thing's going on in here. And what it's doing is measuring just how thick this slurry becomes. And at the end of 60 seconds worth of mixing, it's gonna stop and put the plunger, the weight, on top of that bunch of starch, and it's gonna just wait and count how many seconds it takes for the plunger to fall. Hence the name, falling number. So here we go to the stop, and, and you can see the one of them the sprouted side is already beginning to make its way down slowly, slowly. No starch gel is being formed. There's not a whole lot of resistance to that little weight descending down through it. And when it gets to the bottom here, it's going to trigger a stop. The machine will sense that and beep. It stops and it's got your count right over there, 106 seconds. So there's your falling number. You've got sprouted wheat. So when the starch is degraded, it turns into sugar, which is fine for the wheat plant, not so good for end products. And this is exactly why. A nice sound wheat will make a nice sponge cake, very nice, robust, a lot of volume here, looking very good. So it's a very nice sponge cake. However, if you try to make the same sponge cake with sprouted wheat, what you get is this, a very, very much degraded, flat, can't hold its volume and very gooey and sticky down here at the bottom. 364 seconds on the sound wheat. So there it is, 360 seconds versus 105 or six. Very much sprouted, very much not sprouted. Now the problem with falling number that's causing some consternation is that it's very good at measuring pre-harvest sprouting. However, it also measures a lot of other things too. So falling number has some deficiencies and people need to be aware of it. One has to do with the variety of wheat and the structure of the starch, which is genetically determined. The other's got to do with the altitude and another's got to do with the inevitable lab error. People weigh something a little wrong, they dispense the water a little bit wrong. You get some different answers. So the first thing to do if you get a lower falling number is you want to ask for a retest. So if you're somewhere in the 275 to 300 range and you're about to get dinged for a lot of money, heaven's sakes, pay the 15 bucks or whatever it is and get the thing retested. There's a chance it's gonna come in better just because of whatever odd reason is out there. So always do that. Always be aware of the variety that you're growing because sometimes the varieties do have different intrinsic falling numbers and there's nothing wrong with that wheat. In fact, it's advantageous so you know, think about that a little bit and let the, let the evaluators know that you've got one of these wheats perhaps and they can take that into account. And uh, it doesn't need to be segregated necessarily, it just means that you should not be getting a discount for otherwise perfectly sound wheat. The falling number is certainly not the say all and end all because it does have some technical limitations on the value you get out of it. But it's part of the system now, it just behooves one to know exactly what it's telling you via this instrument and these readings and to be able to uh, take the best advantage yourself of the way the system is working. Discounts are a painful fact of life. We can't control the weather, but we can question the discounts we receive. For more information about falling numbers, please visit the Idaho Wheat Commission website.